Let's discuss repairing the fuel injector control module on the six liter Ford Power Stroke diesel engine. Now we're gonna go ahead and replace the circuit board with the faulty capacitors and coils. And so no programming is gonna be required. We're actually gonna repair the circuit board ourselves. And we're gonna use this component here. Well, first off, we have to remove the FICM or the fuel injector control module as it's referred to. So that's mounted down here underneath this bottle. Now in the gasoline world, we might refer to this as an overflow bottle. In the diesel world, it's called a Degas bottle or a degas bottle. Whatever you want to call it, it's still got to get out of the way. So there's a couple hose clamps we'll pull out of the way here. There's two bolts securing it, and there's another hose underneath. Those are going to be removed, and it gives us great access to the FICM itself. Now there's just four bolts holding the FICM in place and three large connectors underneath it. Those connectors could be a little difficult to get at, but you'll pinch them and pull them down, and the FICM is ready to come out. Well, now that we've got the FICM out of the truck, one of the first things we're going to do is on the top side here, remove this little cover. Now I'm just going to simply remove these two screws using a T20 Torx driver. And once we get these screws out, we're going to look underneath the cover for a couple more screws. Now inside here, you'll see that there's four screws. That's a good sign. Our new FICM is designed for the four screw application. Now some of these will have seven screws in there and those are non-repairable FICMs. Those were used in a couple of early year applications. So first thing we need to do is ensure that we have just the four different screws in here. We do have that, so I'm gonna go ahead and use another Torx driver and remove these. Now I'm going to take my T10 Torx driver and remove the four of these. Now we want to keep all the different screws that we remove out of here separate. A lot of them will be different size, so we'll keep these four separate from the two that we removed from that first cover. Once the four of these are done, now we can flip it over and we've got several of them holding the two halves together. So again, I'm going to take my T20 and remove all of these. Now I've gone ahead and removed all eight screws holding the two halves together. We can separate them. And you'll see as I lift the top part off, this is where those four screws came out of earlier. And you'll see all of our uh, control module or chips and this half of the board. We're going to set that off to the side and we're going to access this portion here in which we're going to replace it. And so now if you look at our, our new replacement unit, you see they match up quite closely. So we have to remove these plastic covers. We're going to gain access to a couple of screws down holding the board to the case half and we'll be ready to swap the units out. So again, we'll take our Torx driver and start by removing these plastic covers. Well, now that we've got the plastic covers off here, we have to go ahead and remove the screws holding the board to the shell. And so there's seven different ones here. You'll see some of them are pretty much in the wide open. A couple of them might be covered in epoxy back here. So you might have to use a little screwdriver or something to get to them. But we can go ahead with our T20 and remove all of these screws now, and we should be able to lift the board off of the shell. Now I've gone ahead and removed all the screws that hold it in place. We're going to have to pull on a little bit because some of this epoxy is still going to be held to the, the side of the case there. So we've now removed our old board, and we're ready to install our new one. Now you notice that there's a couple pads in here which help insulate it from this aluminum cover. Now our new one comes with some additional pads as well, but these ones look in pretty good shape so I, I'm comfortable leaving these alone. So now I'm going to carefully install our new board down onto the mounting pegs here and slides in place, make sure it's sitting on the pads properly, and we'll take our seven screws and carefully remount it to this half of the case. 
Now we've got our board securely mounted to the half shell or the case of the Ficum. We've got to go ahead and reinstall our plastic cover. So I'm going to take the screws that we removed previously and install these plastic covers. Once we get those in place, I can go ahead and reinstall my cover and we'll install the screws on the cover to hold it in place. Now that we've got our halves put back together, I've flipped the Ficum back upside down and we've got our four screws we need to reinstall on the back side here. So I'm going to use my Torx driver again and gently snug up these bolts. We don't want to over tighten them. We might run the risk of cracking the circuit board, but they need to be good and tight. Once I get all four of them in, then it's going to be time to reinstall the cover on the back side. And we can go back out to the truck and install our repaired Ficum. Now we've gone ahead and installed the Ficum in the truck. Now I'm key on engine off and we're just in the scan data here looking at a couple of our voltages. First you'll see like the B plus voltage or the power going into the Ficum should be pretty close to battery, battery positive. So we're at 11.99 volts. Then the, the Ficum internal power here should be 48 volts. And you can see we're right on the mark. We've gone ahead and repaired our Ficum properly. When these things are bad, typically that voltage will be down 36, 28, something like that. And that's the amount of power going to the fuel injectors. And so low power is gonna damage those injectors or cause them not to fire at all. And so now that we've gone ahead and replaced this, our voltage is back to where it should be. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out any codes that may, be, may have been stored by the faulty Ficum, and let's see if the truck starts. There, our truck starts and runs. Our battery voltage is still there. Our charging system voltage is now starting to come up. I'd say we've done a good job here. Now you've just seen how to repair a Ficum on a 6-liter power stroke.